Hey guys and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be bringing you the most exciting video of them all. We're going to be looking at SOS, Software Update Services. So for those that don't know what SOS is, I'll break it down for you quick style. SOS Services is a way of bringing Windows Update on-prem. And that's about it. It just basically just reduces your bandwidth and stops you from hammering Microsoft all the time for all of your updates. And to be honest, it's the most interesting video I've ever done. <laughs> Sorry, nodded off there. So SUS services seems to be an elusive subject for so many people. Now, if you're going to use the Windows internal database, uh, it works fine. But if you want to use SQL, then the post configuration tends to fail and I've never got it working really um, without using PowerShell. So I've used um, full SQL before in the past and it's worked fine. I tr For this particular video I attempted to use SQL Express 2016, still failed, uh, got database connectivity issues, it wasn't working so I still had to revert back to using the full version of SQL. Um, 2016. So we're going to be using PowerShell and we're going to be doing it in just two commands. Just two commands guys and it works. So we'll we'll uh, be installing full SQL and then uh, get it working. So let's first of all just shrink myself down into the corner a bit and uh, we'll uh, move over to the desktop. Hang on a second, what's going on? <coughs> That's better. Okay, so when we look at drives, we've just got a C drive here. Um, I'm going to need a drive for the uh, SUS uh, content, and I'm going to also need a drive uh, for SQL itself. You could probably mix the SUS content with the SQL, um, but I like to split it off. And the reason why I like to split it off is later down the line, if I've got uh, disk space issues or I've uh, got IO performance issues on the SAN or, or uh, a server that you've you've installed it on um, you can move your VHDs around to different locations so if you split it out one into SQL one into um, uh, into SUS content it gives you that flexibility so I'm just going to quickly add in two disks here this is a generation 2 VM so I can add the disks in while the drive is running chuck it in there and I'm just going to call this SQL DB as I've got WSUS SQL DB copy that for future next um, SQL database isn't going to be too big um, so I'll leave it at the default. It's dynamically expanding anyway, so it's only going to use what it uses. Uh, apply that, and then also create a drive for the SUS content itself. We'll do the same thing again, same location. Uh, I'll call it WSUS content, so it makes sense to us uh, when you're looking at it at the file level. Um, SUS can be particularly huge um, so I'm going to set this at 356 gig okay and let's swing back over to his VM now obviously the drives haven't appeared because we haven't initialized them so um, go over to start menu right click and bring up disk management and with a bit of luck there's his two drives there. So bring them online and initialize them. Format them. Uh, equal DB. Do the same thing for the SUS content. Format the drive. Okay, so now we've got our two additional disks. Now, next thing to do is to install SQL. 
So we've got the ISO here, run setup. Now, as SUS uses SQL, it doesn't really need any maintenance from you. I'm going to keep a lot of the settings from default. Um, so I'm not going to use like domain credentials and things for, for service accounts. I'm just going to keep it as the local account. So we'll go over to installation and we'll do a new SQL standalone. And if you want to access the database, you're going to have to install uh, SQL management tools. SQL 16 does not have management tools included anymore. You can't select them. You've got to install them separately. So if you go to the main page here, and click on that it'll take you to the web link on where to download so we'll accept the license uh, we're going to do an update for setup we always get a warning on firewall um, but obviously make sure everything else is passed hit next now the only things that we are interested in uh, to get this working is database engine full text search and uh, reporting. If you don't install the reporting, um, you may have issues um, viewing. Hit next. Um, just so that I know from a database level, um, purely for like backups and things like that, uh, I always add, oops, I always add the uh, name to the end of the instance because if you just stick to MS SQL Server and you're looking at this on like say for example DPM Server and you're backing up just the database you're just going to see SQL and you might have to look at the computer name to work out mm, uh, is this actually what is it SAS or is it something else so uh, I just add that on to the end hit next okay so for all of this the only thing I'm going to change is the uh, service uh, startup agent um, not sure on the collation I've always changed it um, and I can't remember doing any testing just leaving a default um, but I'm gonna set it to SQL Latin um, from memory uh, CIAS so there you go hit next okay so yeah again for access you're rarely ever going to have to access it unless you've got any um, SAS database problems. Um, but I would add in basically your SQL admins group if you've got one. Um, but always add in a domain admin because that way uh, I'm also going to add myself. Um, if you got if you lock yourself out of the database, you, you always make sure that a domain admin's got access to it. Now, data directory tab, this is where we redirect the database to our SQL drive. Uh, we've got it on E drive. So we're just gonna change that to E and you can back up to E as well. Hit next, install and configure. If you want to uh, make a note of the configurations, if you want to be duplicating this on other servers, for SAS, I don't really see why you would ever would, but um, that is where your configuration file is kept. Take a copy of that, dump it somewhere else. Hit install. Now, SQL is going to go through its installation. So, while that is installing, um, because that takes about uh, in previous runs that I've done it's taken about 11 minutes so I am going to install the SUS services role while SQL is installing Ooh, so daring. now if we launch PowerShell in admin mode, this is the command you put in. I put it in the description anyway. It'll save you so much time. That's it. Seriously, that's it. 
So what we're saying is install update services and we're gonna be using a DB and include all the tools, that's it. Off it goes. <clears throat> now if you wanna do it through uh, server manager, you load up your server manager Go over to manage, go to add roles, hit next, hit next, hit next. Go down to uh, update services, put a tick in the box and then it will show you everything that it's going to be installing and then you say add features and then hit next. And then you would configure it through here. Um, and this is where you say I, I want the internal database or I want SQL and then you tell it where to put the content and blah 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 I can't be bothered with it to be honest um, all I'm going to do is configure it with another command right so there we go so we've got the um, feature installed with that one command and the command that we're going to use to configure it uh, I'm not going to run it just yet because SQL's not finished uh, just have a look to see where your drive is so in our case it's F You need to browse to program files, update services, and tools. And in there, there is a susutil exe. And that is what we're going to be running to configure sus from command line. And the command really is so, so simple. So simple, guys. That's it. Are we zooming in? Are we zooming in? Yeah, okay. Susutil.exe, post install, SQL instance name, and, that, and then you put in your server name. So in my case, it is elm-wsus01, and then content directory, F. That's where we're going out to. Uh, F. There it is. And that's it. It'll work. And we'll show you it works in just a minute. So here we go. We've got SQL has fully successfully installed. So now it's time to run the command. Will it work? Will it not? And do you know what? I'm going to take a snapshot just in case. I'm that confident. <laughs> nah, it's just really in case it goes hideously wrong and then I have to edit the video and. Oh. Because these things happen. Right. Three, two, one, go. Post install is started. Now, if you're really that interested, you can go have a look at the log file, which we can go look at. If you browse to your <coughs> folder that you are installed in, that you installed logged in with uh, and bring up app data uh, and go into local temp the log file will be EC37 or whatever your log file is it's there it's zero at the moment because it's building it there you go that's it first time has successfully completed. So let's have a look at the log file. I 
I did say I'll keep it interesting, so I'm not going to go through the log file, but here you go. It's created it, it created the databases, created its thousand million and one tables, and there you go. Post, install, completed. Two guy, two, two guys, two commands, that's it. It really is that simple. Oh, the internet's just crashing to this video right now. Okay, so let's close that down. <clears throat> And what we'll do is we'll go to the um, console. Now this is where it starts getting really, really slow with lots of video editing. So hit next. Uh, uh, can do, not bothered. If you want to join the update improvement program, you can. Because it's the first server, we're going to synchronize with Microsoft Update themselves. I'm not using a proxy. And then start connecting. This bit takes forever. You're looking at, well, on my particular link, uh, a good 25 minutes of just going back and forth and back and forth so I'm gonna start editing now and I'm gonna cut this bit out so see you in a second finally that's actually connected so that's taken a lot longer than expected it was well over uh, an hour um, so let's move on shall we so hit next now we need to select languages so we're only gonna use English now when it comes to products Microsoft selects a load for you I don't want to use their selections so I'm gonna tick all and then untick everything just to make sure and the only things that I'm gonna download just for time really um, is server 16 uh, I'll add some more in later for other videos, but um, just for now, we're just going to do server 16. Hit next. Uh, I'm going to do uh, all classifications because I want it to update everything. So hit next. Um, I'm going to synchronize manually first time around, but then after that, I'll then move over to automatic. I'll probably just do uh, one a day um, to synchronize during the night. But for now, we just do manually. And then begin the initial sync. And then hit finish. So here we can see it started its synchronization uh, there. And what we need to do now is set a group policy so that everything on our lab actually pulls down uh, the updates from this particular server so what we do is we're going to jump over to our domain controller we're still on 2012 r2 for domain i'll do a video on an upgrade if people are interested um, so we'll go over to group policy it's not actually in my start menu there you go so what we need to do is we'll create a new GPO we're going to call this 16 sus edit it now we need to drill down <coughs> what uh, drill down on the tree on what you what you need to configure so we're going to do computer policies admin templates windows components 
and then at the bottom there should be Windows Update, there it is. Now the settings that we need, configure automatic updates. So we're going to enable that. Uh, just for my test lab, um, I'm going to uh, schedule the install. Install during maintenance. Uh, you can do every day if you want. Um, and then I'm going to wind the clock back a bit. Actually. I'm going to install at 1 o'clock in the morning. The next setting uh, is where you actually tell it what server. So in our case, uh, we're going to set Elm dash W sus. Uh, it was a one, wasn't it? A one, and we're going to put the port on the end. Call on eighty five thirty. Do the same thing for the statistics. Now. <coughs> So we've now synchronized, because obviously with Server 16 there's not many patches at the moment. So let's go over to Options, um, and we're going to set the synchronization schedule now to Automatic. And I'm going to say, first schedule at 1 o'clock in the morning, and we'll do one a day. Automatic approvals, um, I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say automatically approve everything on all the computers that are picked up. I'm going to run that. There we go, 30 updates were approved. So once the updates are approved, then they get applied. So, I mean, you can drill down and uh, reject various ones if you wish um, but just for the lab I'm just going to say everything <coughs> now I've got nothing switched on on the lab at the moment so nothing will be picked up but um, if I uh, boot this server up here which is one of my SCCM boxes uh, which is actually my next video uh, eventually uh, given time that machine will appear in here and it will give its status on how many updates it's got and so on so that's it on sus so remember guys just two commands to get it working and uh, hope you found the video of interest uh, remember to do like and subscribe and share the video as well and it does help promote the channel and thank you for watching until next time see you later